Hey guys, we're going to get to your mailbag in just one minute. You guys have a ton of stuff this week. Great, great questions. Lots of emails. You guys just were uh, absolutely pouring in with emails, so we're going to get to that. And yes, there were several voicemails as well, so this is going to be a fun ride tonight as we uh, talk about the Royal Rumble upcoming and, of course, WrestleMania season that's just about to get underway. So your mailbag episode is going to get started right after a word from our sponsor. So here's something that I bet you don't think about a lot. That's your grip strength. You know, we use our grip strength for so many different things during the day that I don't think we realize how important it is and how important it is to not just realize we're using it, but to strengthen it. Having good grip strength can mean the difference between falling and not falling, being able to hold on to that item or dropping it. And you know what else really good grip strength does? It creates a great first impression. Have you ever met someone for the first time and they give you that dead fish hand? That is not a great way to make a good first impression. So why don't you take care of your grip strength? Check out Grip Sanity. You may be asking, what is Grip Sanity? Well, it's an all-in-one device. It's easy to change handles. It'll have your forearms burning in minutes. It'll improve your grip strength, of course, but it's very convenient because you can take it with you anywhere. There's no clunky you know, equipment that you have to bring with you. So if you're wondering what this is and you want to learn out more information, go to gsanity.com and check out Grip Sanity. Look at the testimonials. It's one of those things, guys, that I don't think people really even notice or realize maybe they have an issue until they have a problem. So get ahead of it. Go to Grip Sanity. Check out gsanity.com. That's their website that you can look at the product. You can check out. There's tons of different colors, and you can find the one that suits you. So again, go out and check Grip Sanity. The website is gsanity.com. All righty, guys, let's get to the mailbag portion of the show. And uh, boy, oh boy, do you guys, like I said, you have a ton of stuff, so let's not waste any time. And just a quick little thing, if you want to get rid of those ads, trust me, I know that sometimes they're not wanted. Easy, super simple to do. You head on over to patreon.com and then uh, just go to WWE Podcast. And you, for a dollar a month, you get the entire ad- library ad free. So quick spot for that. But... Let's talk emails because there are quite a few. Um, the first one comes to us from Lewis Connor. So, Lewis, thank you so much as always. And you're from, he, he says, Hi, Matt. I'm Lewis from uh, Glasgow, Scotland. So, awesome. Thank you, Lewis. He says, I actually want Goldberg to beat McIntyre so that McIntyre can win the Rumble to challenge Roman for the Universal Championship because that means you would have a great feud on SmackDown Plus. You could have the Fiend beat Goldberg on Raw, and Edge could come back for Orton. Thanks for reading. Bye. Uh, thank you, Lewis. So, ooh, okay, a lot, a lot of stuff here. And I have a feeling that a lot of these questions are going to be revolving around Goldberg and the Fiend and, and a lot of those top programs. So if any of the pro, anything else comes along that's duplicate, I'll try not to repeat myself too much. That doesn't make for good radio good podcasting. So uh, I have a feeling there'll be a lot of duplications, but Lewis, since you're the first one, let me answer this in full. So you want Goldberg to beat McIntyre. So McIntyre can enter the rumble. So this is what I've been calling for so far. Um, since, I mean, the last couple of weeks I've, I've been on the, on board with, you know, McIntyre entering the rumble and winning the rumble. If he loses to Goldberg, just so he can get to Roman Reigns. Now, do I want that to happen? Do I want Goldberg to win at all? No. But this is the next best thing. So I, I'm with you there. Uh, Roman, you know, and, and Gold, Roman and McIntyre could put on, a, you know, an amazing main event. The build could be awesome. It's just a shame that they blew this off at Survivor Series for nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I'm not going to rant on that because I have many times. But if there's anyone out there that truly believes that the the Goldberg or the uh, Roman Reigns Drew McIntyre match at Survivor Series was worth it, I have... You know, I have to, I have to talk to you. I mean, please come on the show. I want to ask you why. Um, but uh, you know, your other point here that you bring about the fiend beating Goldberg, yeah, I'm fine with that to get revenge. I think it makes sense. And Edge can come back for Orton. Well, Edge seems to be focused on the Royal Rumble. I, I mentioned this on my Raw review. I don't think Edge 
should be focused on Randy, although I want him to be. It makes sense that you're not going to muddy the waters with a unfinished program between the Fiend and Orton. You got to let that kind of play out before Orton or uh, Edge can go full bore into Randy Orton. So, uh, but the Fiend beating Goldberg, yeah, please, anybody beat Goldberg and Go- Goldberg just, just, just kind of fade into the to the sunset, please, for God's sakes. But thank you so much, Lewis. Big, uh, big props to you, and, and thanks for the, the email. Okay, let's get to the next one here. And uh, this is from, and this isn't really a name, but uh, uh, WWE M-I-A-K. So whoever you are, thank you for emailing me. But uh, you actually put your question or your statement in the in the subject. Very, very long subject, but let's talk it. You say, I think Drew versus Goldberg uh, thing is going to continue till WrestleMania and the fiend is going to win the Royal rumble and challenge Roman reigns to win the universal championship. Okay. So again, uh, drew versus Goldberg, you think it's going to continue till WrestleMania, but I I'm not sure how that could be, you know, how can they extend this? God almighty, another nearly two months. I mean, two months and change two months, two and a half months to get to April 10th and 11th. I mean, that's a long time away to get people not turning on this program completely. People are already turning on it. And they haven't even seen it. But we don't need to see it to know what the outcome is going to be. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, the match quality is going to be. You know, what's this going to consist of? Spears, a couple of Claymores, a couple of kickouts, a couple of jackhammers, and good night delights. So, but yeah, The Fiend, gonna win, is he going to win the Rumble? Boy, oh boy, it's possible. You know, I heard rumors about uh, WWE making a scary ending to the Royal Rumble. So could that be Alexa winning her Rumble and The Fiend winning his? Very possible. You know, I I wouldn't put The Fiend out of the equation. So thank you, whoever you are. (laughs) Uh, Okay, let's continue here. And this is from Petra. And uh, she says, hi again, this is Petra. Just saying a few words about what I think will happen at the Rumble with Roman and Kevin Owens. I'm a bit more 50-50 with this match. Obviously, we don't want Roman to lose the belt. But how I see uh, it, why the how I see it, why the heck would they bring back KO unless they have he has a chance of winning? I know that they set Kevin up for revenge, but I don't know why they would move on to go back. The, to the basically to take one step forward to take and then two steps back. Anyway, let me know what you think of that. So what I will say is you would like to believe, I would like to believe, we would all like to believe that Kevin Owens was not brought back just to do another job for Roman. But I will say this. Uh, WWE knows that this is their final blow off. You know, three is typically the magic number for a program when fans are just like, okay, we're done with this. And they put on great matches beforehand. I actually am fine with them going three. I could have even dealt with four. That's how good and much I've enjoyed their program together. Um, you know, in a normal program, if the baby face can overcome it, it's typically the blow off. And, the, the, you know, that's what you build to. And in any normal program, KO should win. But we're talking about something special here with Roman Reigns. We're talking about a guy that has been at the top of his game and, and really, really being the guy to literally carry WWE on his back and do exactly what he says he's going to do and be that damn good for five months since late August, turning heel. The best thing that ever happened, not just to his career, but to WWE in 2020, 2021 now. So do I think that Kevin Owens is just going to lose at, res- at uh, the Royal Rumble? I don't, I don't have an official prediction yet. I'm still kind of racking my brain and see what's going to happen, of course, on SmackDown in a couple of days. But I, I would also I would say it's 50-50. I, I'm kind of with you. I don't mean to cop out here. But could I see Kevin Owens winning that match? I mean, I could. But Roman is on such a hot streak. I don't think you sacrifice anything for that right now. So I think that's my answer. Thank you so much for the question. Okay. Boy, I'm racking through these. Okay. Kevin, Kevin Hurst emails us and says, Something I've noticed ever since the death of John Huber on AEW Dynamite, Jim Ross always says it's Wednesday night and you know what that means. Just think that's a great touch by them. Yes, 
Now, many of you know that I don't watch AEW religiously, but I do catch highlights. I do keep up with at least what the heck is going on, and I did hear about that as well, and I agree. Jim Ross doing that is a nice tribute and a nice opening line for the show. Even if it wasn't a tribute to John Huber, I think it's a great way to open the show. You know, and I honestly don't even know what he meant on Twitter. How many times he put, you know, it's Monday, you know, it's Tuesday, you know, it's Wednesday, you know, it's Thursday, you know what that means, you know what that means. I, I don't even know. I, I think it was just to get people talking because it was so religiously done. I, I, I just think it, yes, it's a great tribute, of course, to always remember him and how quickly we all forget, right? As human beings, we move on to the next tragedy. We move on to the next big news. That's just what we are as human beings, especially in this very short attention span life that we all live now with smartphones at our at our disposal and just, you know, on TikTok, right? Watching the next video, the next video, the next thing. It trains your brain to just move on, move on, move on instead of taking time to really maybe think about something that should take longer than your brain wants to, 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 to you know, pay attention to it. Uh, and I will say on the side note, TikTok is the biggest waste of time in history, <laughs> and I mean that in a way that I have been sucked in for hours and I look up and I'm like, where am I? What day is it? <laughs> TikTok is insanely addictive. Boy, oh boy. Uh, but yeah, I noticed that too, or I've heard about that, Kevin. That's an, a nice touch. I totally agree. To keep his memory alive, it's not just a one week and it's done, but it's an ongoing tribute and something that could become a staple of the program. You know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be about John Huber, even though it is, and it started from him. It's also just a simply a great way to open a show. So thank you so much, Kevin. Great observation. All righty. Let's, uh, let's continue here. And this is one from Christopher. And uh, here I, I won't say your last name just because uh, I don't want to mispronounce it. <laughs> You'll know who you are once I read this. You say, my name is Christopher, and I live in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I love going to WWE events whenever they come around by us. I've been a huge fan all my life ever since my dad got me into it. My question for you is this, uh, that with the Royal Rumble coming up, do you think we're going to have any special debuts in the Rumble, such as Jay White from New Japan or um, Tessa Blanchard? Thank you for reading my email. I hope you're staying safe during these difficult times. So thank you so much, Christopher, from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. You're not too far from me. No, you're, you're you know within uh, somewhat striking distance. So Cool. Um, do I think Tessa Blanchard can debut? Yes, I think she could. I think she'd be a huge grab. If you don't know who Tessa Blanchard is, please educate yourself. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean that in a, like, literally, like, you should just, just Google her. I mean, you know, go to Wikipedia, whatever. She's, I think, would be a great addition to WWE, maybe even NXT, you know, but I, I think that's possible. Jay White, I'm not super familiar with his work from New Japan. I don't follow New Japan in a way that I probably should, but no disrespect to it, but... I don't think a big New Japan get for WWE would be a huge splash in the Rumble, at least in most fans' eyes. While you know who Jay White is, I've heard his name in passing, and is, I'm vaguely familiar with his work. I don't think that WWE would look at this and go, oh, this is going to be a great debut in the Rumble. Tessa Blanchard, I think, is much more of a possibility. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as other special debuts and or re-debuts, I think Braun Strowman, I know he's not a debut, but uh, he's a re-debut. I think Braun Strowman comes back. I think The Fiend comes back. Obviously, Edge is now official. There's, you know, I, I mean, there's there's wild cards out there. People are throwing out The Rock. People are throwing out Brock Lesnar. Uh, I think I think The Rock is like a less than 1% chance. I'd give Brock Lesnar like a 1 in 5 chance of, of being in the Rumble. There, there's crazy, crazy things. And that's what's so damn fun about the Rumble, right? What's so damn fun about the Rumble is all these these rumors and things come out every single year at Rumble time because of the unpredictability of the match. And it speaks to the, 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 the quality of the match. It speaks to how much this match means to fans, how much conversation it stirs up. And there's nothing but good that comes from the Rumble, typically. So, yeah, I mean, could there be big debuts? Yeah, I think Tessa Blanchard, if you're looking on the outside, could be a one. But uh, internally, outside of Braun Strowman... And maybe, maybe Brock Lesnar. I don't think you have a ton. So, all righty. Well, thank you, Christopher, for your question. Uh, and stay safe yourself. 
Okay, let's uh, let's continue on here. I want to make sure I organize. Probably should have organized before the show, right? That, that's that's what a, a a professional would do. But uh, you know, sometimes I sometimes I'm not sure if I'm a professional. I may act like it, but okay. Let's continue on here with the next email, and this one comes to us from our newest patron at patreoncom slash podcast, Maddie Rayson. And uh, first of all, thank you for your patronage. But secondly, you come uh, you, you come with you come bearing gifts here with your rumble prediction and general things that annoy you. So <laughs> this is gonna be good. <laughs> all right. So you it, this is what you say. You say, "Hey Matt, big fan of the podcast. I just wanted to weigh in on the Goldberg discussion. I had the brainwave that this is actually a massive distraction for a different upset. The absolute shock of Goldberg appearing to challenge Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship is big." However, with him not even being able to last 30 seconds in a match, it merely acts as a distraction. The only way this is going to last longer is if Mr. Money in the Bank, can't stand him, yep, me either, The Miz comes in and pins one of them. I think that's going to be the upset. Goldberg is just a distraction for now with everyone thinking, oh God, imagine if Goldberg won. When people are forgetting that The Miz can still cash in. And I think that could potentially be the shock we're not really thinking about. So this is your first, first paragraph out of three. I'll address it by paragraph. It's an easier way to digest this. So, yeah, the Miz X factor here. I haven't really talked about the Miz much other than just destroying him, his character. But I probably should, on a professional level, talk about the possibility of him cashing in. As much as this may hurt my soul, it is a possibility. And he kept alluding to it. uh, That's what he's going to do. He kept telling us the last couple of weeks, that's what he's going to do. I'm going to cash in. I'm going to cash in. I'm going to cash in. And that would tech to, you know, tend to make you believe, well, he's not cashing in. He just told us he's cashing in. But maybe it's reverse psychology. Maybe he is going to cash in, even though he knows that if he says it, people are going to think he's not going to, but he's actually going to. A lot of, you know, kind of weird backward psychology here. So it's possible. And could Goldberg be a distraction? Yes, he could be. But here's what I, here, here's ultimately what I, what I would say is that, yes, Goldberg could be a distraction. Yes, we could have The Miz come in and cash in and actually do what he says. But I don't see The Miz successfully cashing in. Because you can't tell me that The Miz, who has been nothing more than a comedy side act, at least a poor, a poor attempt at comedy, eye-rolling comedy, over the last year with Morrison or more, is going to suddenly become the guy that's WWE champion and is main eventing WrestleMania again. There's just, that would be a disgrace. And you want to talk about me ranting? You've heard me, you've heard me rant on certain things. You guys have heard me rant and others. I know many of you are frustrated like I am with certain things. This would be, it, it may blow up my computer. <laughs> if the Miz can successfully cashes in, it's going to be a disaster. Uh, it will be an X rated or R rated uh, podcast. I'll say that. But you could be right. You could be right. Okay, next uh, next piece to your email here. You say, apart from my prediction, I do have a question. Are the de- uh, Is the WWE just consistently doing things to just annoy us as viewers? I don't know if it's just me, but I'm slowly getting sick of the hurt lock. I'm there watching an amazing match, and suddenly here comes the hurt lock, and the match ends. Uh, ruins it in the meantime, and I'm thinking about what's the point. Change the record. Maybe I'm talking heel uh, i'm taking heel heat too seriously while we're on the topic of things that annoy us if someone could have a chat with byron saxon and tell him that looking and being confused by everything (laughs) he comes across isn't good acting uh, or good tv that would be grand uh in every announcer segment he always has to have the look of confusion as if he's helping the narrative maybe i just need some time off wrestling until the rumble okay first of all (laughs) Yeah, I never really thought about that with Byron Saxton. He is the most confused man on the face of this earth when I think about it. He always does. You're right. I didn't even think about that. And now everyone out there is going to now look at Byron Saxton through a different lens and always look to see what his facial expressions are. Because Byron Saxton is constantly confused. Every segment that happens, everything, no matter what it is, he just has this look of puzzlement of bewilderment on his face does it you're absolutely right now i will never look at byron saxon the same way again 
<laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Uh, but as far as the hurt lock goes, I, you know, I will say this: the hurt lock, a full Nelson, is really what it is. Obviously, I don't think it's a bad finish. I, I really don't. Yes, we have the spear by Bobby Lashley, but how many people, other, other people use the spear? Edge now uses the spear. Goldberg uses the spear. Roman Reigns uses the spear. So Bobby Lashley on the totem pole of, uh, of importance is low man on the totem pole. So they got to develop a new finish for him and the hurt lock. I don't, I don't actually don't mind the hurt lock. You know, I, I think it's a, it's believable. The guy locks it in. You aren't going anywhere. You're tapping. I think it's very believable. I, I honestly don't have any, any issue with it. I, I, just, I don't. Um, but, uh, okay, let's get to your final point here, and then we'll move on. You say, just to make this all a bit more lighthearted, as as well as your opinion on whether the Hurt Lock is getting boring, which, honestly, I don't, I don't think it is. I can see where you think it's getting boring. But what if someone actually breaks out of it? I remember Chris Masters. Being, you know, back in the uh, 2000s, being a guy that uh, had the, 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 the master lock challenge and no one could break out of it. What if someone's strong enough to break out of it? What if, it, you know, Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar and Brock Lesnar breaks the hurt lock? You know, or I mean, you could do some fun things with it because no one's ever you know gotten out of it. Everyone taps. Um, you say Saxton needs to stop trying to look confused all the time. And then my uh, loose prediction of Goldberg maybe being a distraction. And the real Miz stake, see what I did there? Yes, I see what you did there. That's funny. Uh, is going to be that the Miz is going to try to cash in during their match. I'd just like to say that uh, I, I, everything WWE has tried to do during this crazy time, and I, I thank them for continuing to give us the, this escape, whether there have been some questionable things that happened in WWE over the, month, over the months. They've kept it going, and I'm really grateful that I can escape on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night and forget about COVID for a few hours, and I'll always appreciate them for that. The, uh, that also extends to you and the team for keeping us entertained during the pandemic. Love the podcast and everything you do. Stay safe. Maddie from Newcastle in the UK. So first of all, thank you so much, Maddie, uh, for, the, for those kind comments. And really, I think that is something that I often overlook myself, admittedly, overlook the fact that WWE has gone in the face of the pandemic. They were the only sporting event doing anything last spring. And I don't want to have the debate whether they're a real sport or not. They're a real sport, okay? And uh, they, they, they were. They were the only thing going. They were the only thing going to keep, in terms of sports, to keep people's minds off of what was going on last spring and summer and fall and now winter. And now we're back into the spring soon. And it will be a full year shortly and I, I agree. I think we should be grateful for to WWE, to WWE for what they've done. They could have easily shut down and said, well, you know, we'll see you next year. They could have. But that is not Vince McMahon's mentality. For all the flaws Vince has, all the flaws in the creative, all the nonsense, all the terrible characters and ter- terrible stories, lack of storytelling, lack of uh, just basic storytelling, massive plot holes, all of that that we rant about on a weekly basis here, it's all in fun. Right? Yes, we, we actually truly care about the stories. I do. I do. I don't mean it's ah, it's all a joke. I don't mean any of it. No, I I really mean it. Everything I've said on this show, I really mean. It. I don't take anything back I've ever said, and I mean it. But when you take another step back and get to real life, and you look at this through the lens of being thankful for WWE, yeah, I mean, what if they were just still gone? They they certainly did help. Um, I think ease people's minds, and I, I know that they felt that people needed them, and that's absolutely the case. So uh, thank you so much for the email, and uh, we'll be in touch. All righty, let's, let's take a look here. Do, do we have any more emails? I oh, don't want to miss anybody. That might have been the extent of, yep, it looks like that's the extent of the emails. If I miss somebody, yeah, it's possible that it went to my junk mail. Um, I really do want to make sure I get everyone's email. So uh, let me know. Let me know. But uh, all right, well, let's take a quick break, get a word from the sponsor, and then we'll be back with the voicemails. You get to hear another voice besides this beautiful one right now, and I mean that very sarcastically. So here we go. Let's take a break, and we'll be back with your voicemails. Hey, guys, we're going to get to your mailbag in just one minute. You guys have a ton of stuff this week. Great, great questions. Lots of emails. You guys just were uh, absolutely pouring in with emails, so we're going to get to that. And yes, 
There were several voicemails as well, so this is going to be a fun ride tonight as we uh, talk about the Royal Rumble upcoming and, of course, WrestleMania season that's just about to get underway. So your mailbag episode is going to get started right after a word from our sponsor. So here's something that I bet you don't think about a lot. That's your grip strength. You know, we use our grip strength for so many different things during the day that I don't think we realize how important it is and how important it is to not just realize we're using it, but to strengthen it. Having good grip strength can mean the difference between falling and not falling, being able to hold onto that item or dropping it. And you know what else really good grip strength does? It creates a great first impression. Have you ever met someone for the first time and they give you that dead fish hand? That is not a great way to make a good first impression. So why don't you take care of your grip strength? Check out Grip Sanity. You may be asking, what is Grip Sanity? Well, it's an all-in-one device. It's easy to change handles. It'll have your forearms burning in minutes. It'll improve your grip strength, of course, but it's very convenient because you can take it with you anywhere. There's no clunky you know, equipment that you have to bring with you. So if you're wondering what this is and you want to learn out more information, go to gsanity.com and check out Grip Sanity. Look at the testimonials. It's one of those things, guys, that I don't think people really even notice or realize maybe they have an issue until they have a problem. So get ahead of it. Go to Grip Sanity. Check out gsanity.com. That's their website that you can look at the product. You can check out. There's tons of different colors, and you can find the one that suits you. So, again, go out and check Grip Sanity. The website is gsanity.com. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. All righty, let's get to your guys' voicemails because there's, there's a good amount of them today, and let's not waste any time. And I believe this is Brad from Pennsylvania. You guys know him? Very loyal call-in listener, so uh, let's see what Brad has to say today. Yo, Matt, it's Brad from Pennsylvania. What's going on? Um, today I just got a couple questions for you, actually. Um, my first one, this will be first because today is actually Friday. It's about an hour before SmackDown comes on. I hear a rumor that Aleister Black is going to be returning and they're going to give him a pretty big push. So I was just wondering, do you think they're going to change his gimmick at all? Do you think he'll be a heel? Do you think he'll be a face? I mean, when he left, he was obviously a heel, but they just kind of changed his gimmick a little bit right before he kind of went away. Then one of my other questions for you, I don't know, I know you have Instagram because I messaged you a few times on there. Do you by any chance follow Braun Strowman? I'm sure he's probably going to be making a comeback probably at the Rumble as well as a lot of other wrestlers, but this guy is, he was a big dude to begin with but he's been on uh, a nutrition program, and he is absolutely shredded. I mean, I don't know how you can make a guy his size any bigger, but he got bigger, and he got leaner, and he is an absolute animal. So when he does return, I would like to see them give him a pretty big push, maybe line him up to fight for one of the belts, something like that, because, I mean, He's looking like an animal, so I'd love to see him be used properly. And then my last question. Probably, maybe he's going to come back at the Royal Rumble, but where the hell is Lars Sullivan? They started to do those little interviews with him, which, honestly, they were pretty corny. But at the same time, they were finally developing his character a little bit. Like, oh, he's mad because he got bullied when he was a kid. And then he disappeared. So that's all I got for you today. Just three questions, stuff that's on my mind, stuff that I was just thinking about because I saw the rumor about Alistair, and I'm expecting a lot of people that have been off TV to make returns to the Rumble. So let me know what you think, man. Take care, folks. Hey, Brad. So uh, let's answer your questions here. As far as Lars Sullivan goes, I don't know. I have no clue where he is. Uh, do I do I even care? Not really. You know, like I said, perhaps he's too busy on Instagram messaging uh, messaging married women. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what his gimmick is going to be, where he's just this creep that uh, that 
preys on uh, married women and, and I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, of course, being facetious, but I, I don't know where he is. Could he make an, an, an entrance into the Royal Rumble? He could. Where you you can all, you know, hear, I can hear Michael Cole right now. And, oh my God, here comes the freak. I mean, you can hear it. You can hear it. He just clears out the ring. But I, I mean, I won't be sad. I don't think, you know, you have people sitting there, you know, sitting on their you know, their hands on the edge of their seat waiting for Lars Sullivan. But it's possible. It's possible. I haven't heard that he's been released. So he's still somewhere floating around the WWE, uh, you know, universe to use a terrible corporate term. As far as Aleister Black goes, I think he also could debut in the Rumble, re-debut in the Royal Rumble. I think it's a strong chance. I've heard the same thing. I, I don't think he's been released either. I, at least to my knowledge, he hasn't. Do I think he's going to have a different gimmick? No. You know how I know that? Because WWE didn't change John Morrison's gimmick, and he was gone from WWE for, what, eight, seven years? And they just put him right back where, where they left off? So, no, I have no faith that they're going to change his character. But he could come back, I think, babyface, because I think the fans would be excited to see him. Um, I think he's much better as a heel, but he'll they'll probably um, slot him into a babyface role. Um, and as far as Braun Strowman goes, I did not see pictures of Braun Strowman. I'll take it for, you know, your face value. And I'm not shocked that Braun Strowman is getting ripped. I'm scared to see what it looks like because Braun Strowman has been a very thick, muscular guy. We've never really seen him lean down to show the muscle. So Lord almighty, I'm sure that the pictures you're seeing are scary. I tried to look it up for some reason. I can't find him on Instagram. I, I, as you were talking, I was looking and I, I just, I can't, I can't find him. but I'll, I'll dig a little further. So if that's the case, yeah, Braun Strowman is very, very likely to debut, re-debut into the Royal Rumble. He's probably the most likely out of everyone that I've talked about between Brock Lesnar and, uh, and, uh, Alistair Black and Lars Sullivan. I mean, all these guys, I think, uh, we definitely have almost a lock that Braun Strowman's going to be in the Royal Rumble. So, Brad, thank you so much for your voicemail. Call back soon. Okay, let's keep going. Hi, it's Kyle from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I wanted to talk about the match tonight with Alexa and and Asuka with the title match. I hope she wins the championship tonight because I just feel like she is the best part of my night raw and she should be the champion. So hopefully... That will happen, and then when it does, you could do that rematch at the Royal Rumble, which I guess will make sense at that mo- that at that moment. But at the end of the day, Alexa should be the champion going into WrestleMania, and just for I guess the rest of this year, for a long time this year, a few months to be the champion. But what do you think about that? Um, let's take a phone call. Bye. Hey Kyle, thank you for the the voicemails. Always. I have to disagree with you here. Um, and those of you that know office space, <laughs> I don't know why that scene came to mind when uh, the boss says, uh, you know, I'm going to have to disagree with you here. <laughs> okay. I may be telling it, you know, this may be falling on deaf ears. If you haven't seen office space, go see it. Very, it's an old movie, but it's good. Okay. Uh, as far as your, uh, your, your, your issue with Alexa bliss or you're wanting her to become women's champion, I'm on board with you. I want her to be women's champion too, but I don't want it right now because I'm, I'm of the belief of the belief that delayed gratification is often worth it. And I want it to be a good story for her to get the championship. You know, she beat Oscar last week, which apparently just magically awarded her a number one contendership and Oscar somehow agreed to this match. I also don't like that. It's on free TV. WWE has this incessant need to have a championship match on every single raw and or SmackDown. And I think it is doing great damage to the value of what we used to perceive a championship match being. Now, they are a dime a dozen. Everyone gets them. They're happening on every show. I'm a huge believer in there's too many, too many championship matches, period. And with that said, though, I still want Alexa Bliss to be champion. But I don't think her going into WrestleMania would be interesting. I think her winning at WrestleMania would be interesting. So I think Alexa should be crowned women's champion at WrestleMania. Now, do they go that road? Maybe, maybe not. You know, if Alexa has these powers, you would assume that she would use it in the Rumble to win the Rumble. So, um, anyway, thank you so much, Kyle, and let's keep rolling. Hey, it's Kyle from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, one last thing I forgot to mention is that when there were still fans still in the building, um, Sasha always gets cheered. Whether she's a heel or a baby face, it really doesn't matter. People just like Sasha do because of her work. I really think 
And for me, it's like I said, I mentioned this before the last call that it, I, why I watch wrestling, I watch it for the, um, I watch it for like the wrestling perspective, perspective as, you know, I know you supposed to have good characters and stuff like that. I get that and I understand it. And, but if I already like them because I've watched them for so many years already, if I already like them, then I don't care what they are, whether it's the heel or baby face, I don't care what they are. So that's, so that's my whole thing about Sasha is that whether she's a heel or a baby face, when it, when, when it was fans that still existed, you know, <laughs> she got cheered. So I think that's not really that fair of an argument. Now, will she get booed during Alexa Bliss if she faces Alexa at WrestleMania? I, maybe, who knows? But that's how I see it. But that was it. It's all time. Hey, Kyle. So normally I don't do two voicemails for a single person, but uh, I, I do want to <laughs> wrap up this Sasha Banks uh, debacle that you and I have had over the last several weeks. And look, I, I'm glad you like her. I, I think that's great that you uh, you are. You know, you, you you like this character, whether she's a babyface or not. I think that they, that's good. That's what brings you to wrestling is that you know, the love of character and, and larger than life characters. Um, and you're right. You know, when she was babyface and or heel, people would still cheer for her because she's a big star. And at the same time, though, if you're a big star, then you should at least have the ability to to dictate to the audience what their reaction is to you. Just because you're a, if you're a heel and getting cheered, you're not doing your job. So yeah, you know you, you may be right. People will cheer if, when she was a heel, just because oh it's Sasha Banks. But if you're a heel and you're cast as a heel, you shouldn't want people to cheer for you. You're not doing your job. Creative's not doing their job. And you know you, if you don't care if they're babyface or heel, that's not what you watch it for. Then great, hey, cool. You know, and I think that that's. A very easy way to watch wrestling where, you know, you're not going to get too annoyed at storylines because you are very just entrenched in the character and you don't really care about the good and bad, right? Like, and that's cool. But I think that majority of fans, I, I believe this, is that watch it to see baby faces overcome heels and heels get what's coming to them. It's simple human psychology. And again, you know, Sasha Banks could get could get cheered and probably did get cheered as a heel. As many people who have been cast at heels did get cheered, which I think is again that that's that's not the reaction you want. That's a that's bad. But Vince McMahon would tell them oh, they're making noise. No, they're they're making noise in the wrong way because you want them to hate you. That's how you tell a good story. If they're wishy washy, you didn't do your job. But again, if you don't care about heel and face, then this is irrelevant. So, okay, let's, as I said, let's keep going on. Thank you, Kyle, for the clarification on Sasha Banks. I know you love her. So, okay, let's keep moving. Hey, Matt, it's Kyle from New York again. Um, Well, the first thing I'm going to say is you're probably going to talk about this on your Raw review already because I'm I'm sending this um, this voicemail uh, the night of Raw. You're probably going to talk about this on your review. But, um... I don't know if you heard, the WWE Network is moving to Peacock on, I think, March 18th, I want to say. And the first pay-per-view on is going to be Fastlane on March 22nd, I think. That's what I've heard. And uh, so, first off, do you think it's a good idea? Honestly, I think it's a good move because it's actually cheaper. So from what I've heard, you know, WWE Network's $10 a month. From what I've heard, Peacock's only like $6 a month. So it's cheaper and it's more content. So I think it's a good idea, honestly. Second, who do you think is going to win the two Rumbles? My prediction is pretty similar to yours for the women. I think Alexa Bliss is going to win the Women's Royal Rumble, cross over to SmackDown and challenge Sasha, because I think Charles Flair is going to be fighting Asuka. So I think it's going to end up being Asuka versus Charlotte for the Rollins Championship, and Sasha versus um, Alexa Bliss for the SmackDown Championship. And Mania. Also, for the men's, I agree with you, Drew McIntyre. But at the same time, I feel like it could be Edge. I don't know why. I just have a feeling it's going to be Edge. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't fight like the WWE champion, I think he, I think he said his promo on Raw. He's going to he's done it as a WWE champion. But honestly, I would be down to see him fight Raw in like SmackDown. I think that could be a fun feud. But yeah, I think Edge might win it. My first is Edge and Alexa Bliss. 
but maybe Drew McIntyre. Because, like you said, Goldberg beats Drew McIntyre. I think Drew McIntyre can win the Rumble. Lastly, um, who do you think could be next for Sasha if it's not Carmella? I mean, it's not Russell Bliss, my bad. Uh, I think it could be Naomi. Maybe return Naomi. Maybe Naomi will return to her role. Naomi will fight her anyway. Uh, that's it, really. Thanks. Kyle from New York. Thank you, as always, for the call. Yes, I did hear about Peacock. Um, if you um, look at my feed, I actually did a quick hits on it where I talked a little bit at length. When I say at length, it was like 15, 20 minutes about the whole move. In summation... Uh, paraphrasing myself, I agree it's a good move, not just for the consumer, which it, it is cheaper. If you do the ad version, it's four ninety nine. If you do the premium version of nine ninety nine, it's the same price that you're paying now, just with no ads. So for a lot of fans, it's not going to change, but there is a subset of fans that are willing to pay half price for the ads. I cannot stand ads. I hate ads in my shows. I don't want them there. I will pay whatever I need to to get them off of my screen. So for me, it's not going to change anything monetarily every month. I'm going to pay the $9.99 and just it's it's just $120 a year and uh, I have no problem with that. Um, but again, yeah, it's it's good for the consumer. Also, Peacock has 22 million subscribers right now on the network. On there again, I don't know how many are paid, but that's 22 million. WWE Network has peaked around 2 million and then leveled off around 1.3 million, 1.4 million um, throughout the year. So they are going to get more eyeballs on their product and hopefully more subscribers to Peacock to uh, get the WWE Network. So a much a much bigger potential consumer base. I think that's smart too. Plus the, the deal apparently is worth a billion dollars to WWE. Um, so there, there's really, again, I have nothing negative to say about it. I think it's a great move from the fans to WWE to Peacock. This is a win, win, win completely all the way around. I have nothing negative to say about this um, at all. So uh, good call on that. As far as your pick for um, Alexa Bliss winning the women's Royal Rumble. Yeah. Right now I would say that's my pick that could change after Thursday night. Um, or Friday night, if they do anything regarding, you know, Alexa Bliss. I know she's on Raw, but um, but if anything kind of tips me to maybe who she could challenge. I like your pick, though. I like that Sasha Banks versus uh, Alexa Bliss, considering that matchup we haven't seen in a while. I like that. For the men, right now my pick is Drew McIntyre, but poof, um, that also could change. And and you guys will have to tune in Saturday night for my final picks because I often do last minute changes and I often get swayed by my co-hosts' logic if their if their picks are different than mine. So um, I'm not confident in my picks at all. I, I really am not. But I, I'm with you right now, Kyle. I would if I was a betting man and I had to pick as of this moment. That is what I would choose. So all right. Well, uh, let's keep things rolling. Hey, Matt, how are you, buddy? This is uh, Anthony from Long Island, New York. Uh, just uh, giving, you, giving you a call. Just finished listening to your weekend review with Mimi. Uh, wonderful job. Uh, really, really great content lately on the podcast. And uh, listening to the quick hits, you, you tease a potential uh, big guest. So now you got my mind uh, wondering who, who, who may this big guest be. Um, probably the Miz, if I know you, being that you're such a huge fan. That was a little, little joke, obviously. But uh, but wanted to uh, call about two things. Number one, uh, I agree with you guys that uh, Sami Zayn is absolutely killing it. I love this character. I love this protest, this this conspiracy. I just absolutely cannot get enough of it. Um, he, he just is doing such a great job, and, and he could kill it in the ring. And I just think there's endless opportunities for him to go with this. It's hysterical and also serious at times. So he, he's just doing a great job, and I just I just want more of him. Uh, my question to you is I have been noticing lately, and I wonder if you uh, have noticed this as well, that the uh, WWE has been pumping in a lot louder the, 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 you know, the fake fan noise, a lot, a lot more booing, cheering. They did it with Triple H. Uh, two rows ago, and I noticed it with Roman Reigns, where they're trying to give him uh, heat, and they're, they're pumping in a lot of booing, and, and it seems so obvious now that the people on the the, the, the TVs behind the, you know, the ring, you know, all have their thumbs pointing down. So I imagine they're getting some sort of direction from from the uh, you know from WWE, maybe a message, uh, you know, put thumbs down, something to that effect. It just seems I'm starting to notice it more, and and my question is. 
I think there's certain characters that they're overplaying, the WWE is overplaying, where the 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 live audience wouldn't agree with the fake noise that they're pumping in. And I wonder how they're going to deal with that. And I wonder if there's anybody that you would think that once there are fans, which look like it's going to be sooner rather than later, are going to completely disagree with the fake fan noise, whereas they may be cheering as instead of booing, you know, the week prior when they were pumping in the fake noise. I think that's a, that's something that could be interesting. Maybe I'm maybe I'm off, maybe I'm wrong, but but I do feel that there could be you know some some instances, and I'm curious to see how they handle Goldberg because I don't think anybody would be cheering that, but they're obviously going to try to pump that that noise in unless they unless they you know give me heel turn. But um, I'm just fascinated. This is obviously unprecedented. Something like this has never happened before, where you're going to go from a year of manufactured, um, you know, heat and, 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 and you know, and, and, and fandom to reality. And, and who, who do you think are the people that the WWE is going to be like, oh, crap, we called this wrong, and now we got to deal with it. But um, curious to Well, Anthony, thank you so much. Always great to hear from you. And you are a victim of the three-minute rule. <laughs> You came so close. I heard you closing out your your comments, uh, but uh, you just missed out. It, it cut you off. But I got the gist of it. Uh, first of all, yes, thank you for always calling in. Thank you for being a, a listener, and I'm glad that you're enjoying our content, uh, the Week in Review specifically. Um, as far as the big guest goes, yeah, I, I you, you kind of tip my hand, man. It, it's the Miz and Morrison coming on the show. Uh, you are correct. Um, of course, I can't even say that without part of my soul leaving my body. And that is, no, uh, it is not the Miz and Morrison. Um, it, it's, um, I, I don't want to give any clues. It's, I will say this, it's not an in-ring competitor, okay? So those that are thinking, oh my God, you scored like the rock. Okay, no, uh, I didn't, I didn't get anybody of that, of that magnitude. And, and maybe you've never heard of who this person is, but I, I don't want to pump it up too much. I'm probably, you know, setting the bar super, super high. But if you follow wrestling, you, you follow wrestling websites, you know the big podcast, you're going to know this name. So I will just say that. I just got to firm up dates and things like that. So more information to come, my friend. As far as uh, pumping in the crowd noise, yeah, I cannot wait for WWE to get a big dose of reality when the fans are there. Now, to Mimi's point, I think she brought this up on the weekend Review. If the fans come back, they're just going to be potentially just excited to be there and not want to boo anybody. They're just super happy that they can contribute in a real live way and that they're not going to really want to boo. They're just going to be cheering and just be super happy to be there. I think that will wear off very quickly. It could happen, but I think it's going to be very, very quick. I don't think that that euphoria is going to last very long. That delusion is going to last long. It's going to kind of be like, oh, cool. Oh, we're back. Yay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't like this and this and this. So you, you could be, you know, right in terms of WB getting a big old slap in the face of reality. Goldberg would be number one. I think the fans would absolutely destroy him in, in front of a live crowd, and I hope they do at WrestleMania. Uh, I think that Roman Reigns would still get booed, but I'd be very concerned that he'd get cheered that from some of the fans. I think he's doing such a good job that they would cheer him, but he's doing such a good job that they should boo him. He's not a cool heel. So there's the difference. Um... You, you know, I think those are the, the, the two I'd be very interested to hear the most, especially in really just WWE getting a dose of what they deserve of Goldberg's reaction. Yes, I, I really wish I could hear that. I also like to hear Drew McIntyre's reaction. You know, I want to hear real fans with real emotion. I agree. I, I mean, I could do a whole show about this itself. I mean, with how many different reactions they've done over the uh, months now, I was going to say years, over the months. And there's been so many different times I'm like, yeah, th- this the fans would destroy this or that or this. And uh, I, I cannot wait for fans to be back. The, the key would be, of course, after WrestleMania, what happens? Do they continue to bring fans in on a weekly basis? You know, I don't know. Maybe they do. I, I know that they're looking at this as a test subject, so maybe they do. I'm looking fans to be looking forward to fans being back. I think we all are. Uh, so certainly, it, it's going to be exciting. Uh, but yes, you're exactly right. I have known people that have gotten into the Thunderdome and uh, the, they essentially get like prompts to, you know, cheer or boo and, and make facial reactions or do whatever during the program. So they do get cued. It, it, it is very manufactured. I, I totally agree. So thank you so much, Anthony. And uh, watch that three minutes, man. You're so close. You almost made it. And uh, great to hear from you. I'll be talking to you very soon. Okay, let's keep moving on to the next voicemail. 
Hey Matt, it's Bevan from Australia. I uh, hope you guys are all well there. Um, I've just watched uh, Raw, but I haven't listened to your Raw review yet, so you might have covered this. But the uh, main event between Oscar and Alexa Bliss, I thought it ended kind of weird. Um, not to mention all the, you know, video trickery they're putting in it because there's no um, crowds anymore, which I'm kind of getting a little bit tired of. It's kind of becoming a little unreal. But anyway, I'll, that's, that's just a gloss over. Um, I just thought that when Randy Orton came in and delivered his RKO to Alexa Bliss, the rest suddenly wasn't there. Like, the rest was up there up to that point, and suddenly the rest disappeared. So even though he went in and disrupted the match, there was no referee to call the match off and say, you know, no result or definitely no disqualification. But I just found that suddenly the referee's not there and to just go stop the match. Small detail, I know, but I just noticed that straight away. I thought, oh, you know. Anyway, I uh, just thought if you picked that up as well. Or, and um, my other thought was, and this was before last night's um, matches and that, I was thinking... Do you think the Fiend or Bray Wyatt will make an appearance in the Royal Rumble? Um, my th- I, I kind of think he will, but I'm always wondering what guys that he might come in as. Would he come in as the Fiend or would he come in as Bray Wyatt? And after last night's uh, disruption by Randy Orton, you'd think that one of the two, maybe the Fiend, would just come in and I don't think, definitely don't think he's a favourite to win. I don't think the Fiend needs to win the Royal Rumble, but... I wonder if he's now going to make his appearance in his new guys after being burnt alive um, in this new form and he's going to come in, take out Randy Orton or affect Randy Orton's chances and um, then disappear again. So, yeah, just wondering your thoughts on uh, those two things. And, um, yeah, thanks for the great show and hope you guys are all well over there. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, Bevan, thank you for the voicemail. Always good to hear your voice. You always come up with very unique things. I, I, I love it. You always come up with these details that I, I notice in the moment and then I forget to talk about. You're right. So the, the, the ending to the Monday Night Raw show, again, all the hocus pocus they're going to have to enjoy while they can because when fans come about, they can't do this stuff. So they're they're enjoying their be their, their, their cinematic version or their cinematic uh, trickery that they can do with no fans. But yeah, the referee was gone and there was no explanation. So I guess it, it just comes down to WWE probably thought that or didn't even think and just said, ah, well, we don't need the referee there. People know it's a DQ. We don't need. No, it's, it's an actual contest. And by the way, it's for a championship. Why is the referee not there to at least ring the bell? My thinking is they looked at it as, well, that would just be a distraction and take away from the moment. We don't want to hear the bell ringing and call for a disqualification while, you know, you see Randy standing there. They, you, you, they want the announcers to narrate. They, they don't want the, that noise that's not needed you know, during that moment. They don't want to, you know, take people out of it. To me, that would add to the moment. That bell ringing would signal, oh, my God, what just happened? It's a DQ. It, it would at least give you a finale to the match. Or the the uh, you know at least a official finale to the match, and we all know it's a DQ. But how do you know, how if you're a simulated sport do you not at least address that? I agree, I agree. Uh, but to your second point about uh, the fiend in, in coming in the rumble, absolutely. I mean, one way or the other, Randy Orton is going to be distracted by the fiend or lose to the fiend or eliminated by the fiend. Uh, something's going to happen with Randy Orton in the rumble with the fiend in some kind of way. Now, could this be a three faces of Foley scenario where he, you know, we have Bray Wyatt come out as just the happy go lucky, uh, evil childhood host, uh, show host? Yes, and then it comes down. Then then he um, evolves. I'll get it out. Evolves into the swamp cult leader version of Bray Wyatt, and then the Fiend. Right. So the Bray Wyatt that comes out first gets eliminated. The second one gets a little darker, and the third one's the Fiend. It could be a three faces of Foley scenario. I think that's very possible. Um, or it's just straight the fiend. And yes, he should look different. If the fiend comes out with the same mask and the same leather jacket and is the exact same, somebody should be fired. Seriously. I mean, the fiend's been gone for five weeks, six weeks. He should be straight out fired. Whoever is responsible for this. If if the fiend doesn't look different, but yes, yeah, some way, somehow the fiend will be distracting Randy Orton, which will lead likely to a match at the next pay-per-view and, and then end it there. And then he moves on to edge for WrestleMania. Alrighty, let's continue on with our next voicemail. 
Hey, man, how you doing? It's a casual wrestling fan here. Well, I'm pretty sure everybody else on the mailbag show this week is going to talk about the Royal Rumble, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to try to come at it a little differently. Um, I'm going to look at Vegas. So currently, which I know it changes up and down, so it's probably different when you when you uh, get this voicemail, but currently, Daniel Bryan is one, Keith Lee, followed by Big E, Brock Lesnar, and Edge are the top five people with the with the five best odds. Um, not knowing who you're currently picking at this moment, but if you had to pick out of the list of those five people, who would you pick? I think it'll probably end up being a hit. I mean, the way he came on the road and said what he said, you know, he's probably my top. My next one will probably be Daniel Bryan. Um, I really don't care to see Keith Lee win it. And I don't think it's too soon for Big E as well. Um, but that's my um thought on that. Also, on the women's side, the top five goals, Bianca Belair, followed by Alexa Bliss, followed by Rhea Ripley. Those are the top three highest, and then way down below them, <laughs> Ronda Rousey and Bailey to round out the top five. I had to pick from those two. I mean, from those five, I'd probably go with Bianca Belair would probably be my number one. Um, my second pick would probably be Rhea Ripley. I think, you know, along with what's happening with Alexa Bliss and the Randy Jordan story, and the Fiend, obviously, now he's going to be, you know, entertaining in some shape, way, or form or fashion. Um, also, um, right now they have Goldberg's underdog. Um, and I actually like Drew McIntyre to win it. Um, all week I've been thinking um, he's going to drop it. I'm hoping and praying that Drew will keep the belt and we don't have to deal with Goldberg. Love Gilbert, not Goldberg. And um, last thing, for all the people that think that uh, Becky Lynch is going to come back, I can assure you that's not going to happen. You know why? Because Alina Baker, who has been fired from WWE months ago, is odds on, has the worst odds to win the World Rumble, and Becky Lynch has no odds on. So that's all I got for you this week, Matt. Hope you have a great rest of your week, and hope all the fans and everybody at home has fun watching WrestleMania. I mean, uh, Royal Rumble, sorry. All right, thanks. Well, it wouldn't be the mailbag without the casual wrestling fan. I'm glad you're looking at the Vegas odds. I would also caution people looking at the Vegas odds because, as you pointed out, they change quickly. They often change last minute. There's last minute money that comes in. You got to be very careful of that. Very careful. But Vegas does often get it right. And if I was going to pick out of those that candidate, that pool of candidates for the men's side, AJ Styles is certainly up there. Uh, I don't want Big E too soon. Uh, certainly too much too soon. I, I think that Keith Lee as well, too much too soon. Brock Lesnar hasn't even given a hint that he wants to come back, and I think people would be really pissed, quite frankly, if he comes back and wins the Rumble. So I think you're right. Out of those uh, out, out of those candidates that you gave me, AJ Styles is probably the most likely. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, AJ Styles hasn't really gotten a lot. He, he's won matches. He's done great with Ricochet, beating Ricochet, but he hasn't really laid the foundation for a big run in winning the Rumble. I mean, so there is also an argument to be made against it, but if you give me just those select people, I'd choose AJ as well. As far as the women go, yeah, no Becky Lynch. People need to stop with the fantasy booking. Um, I I think Bianca Belair is a front runner. I would love her to win. I think that she would be a great fit, but you also have Alexa Bliss. To me, she's the top candidate. I I just, right now, as I speak... She, to me, is the top candidate to win, and, and you're right. With with Goldberg and Drew McIntyre, oh, Lord. I, I I don't know anybody that's cheering for Goldberg to win. There's just, there's just no need. There's just no need for Goldberg to win, but they keep setting it up. Like, that's the one championship that's eluded him. That's the one. Uh, how can somebody be a WWE Hall of Famer that has never been WWE champion? Riddle me that. Riddle me that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan. And I think we have one more, one more voicemail. I don't want to say we're saving the best for last because I love all all of you guys. But this guy, I think you'll know. Hey, Matt, back at it again. I just got two questions just to throw at you. So I know that everybody, even me including, (laughs) is not so happy about a possible Goldberg winning the uh, WWE title at the Royal Rumble. But here's a question that probably nobody's not really uh, thinking about. What if Drew McIntyre retains and squashes Goldberg? 
what does uh what does WWE creative you know do next with Drew McIntyre? There are there is a rumor or a fact I should say that um that uh Goldberg is gonna be back at WrestleMania. So you know Drew McIntyre and Goldberg again at WrestleMania or some interaction with uh maybe Roman Reigns. So uh what if Drew McIntyre retains? That's one question. And just looking into your crystal ball into the future. Going to WrestleMania 37 in this uh, COVID-19 type of uh, life that we're having. Do you see a possible title change? You know, because this is kind of weird that uh, the top, you know, the top uh, superstars on the main roster, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, seem like unstoppable, you know, unstoppable, unbeatable, that you can't really find a person to pair up you know, for them to pair up against that could, you know, uh, drop the title that, that they drop the title against them. So do you see um, in the in your crystal ball <laughs> that uh, that, you know, that these guys drop the title? Because uh, to me, Roman Reigns is killing it right now. And uh, it's hard to see him drop the belt at this time, you know, and uh, Drew McIntyre, one of the best, like I mentioned before, one of the best baby faces since John Cena. Do you probably see him drop the title again? And to whom? I mean, and oh, oh yeah, one more thing. The Miz has the money in the bank briefcase. So, obviously, somehow, um, either in the title match with Roman Reigns or a title match with Drew McIntyre, there's going to be a lurking Miz around to kind of take the opportunity. But, uh, yeah, so like I said, um, what if Drew McIntyre retains at the Royal Rumble? And do you see a title change at WrestleMania? For the Universal and for the WWE title. Uh, just once again, always good to be listening to your show. Shout out to all the listeners. Shout out to the team. And I'll talk to you next time. Ah, yes. DJ Kuzmo. Thank you so much. Really glad to hear you again. Okay, you present something interesting here. Goldberg getting squashed. Yeah, it's possible. Somebody did bring this up to me. So I just don't remember where it wasn't me. I, my, my creative brain didn't exist for that one, but, uh, I think it's the most unlikely scenario, but it is possible. It is possible that this happens because either way, this is going to be three minutes or less. It just is. And I don't want to hear anybody say, Oh, Goldberg is going to surprise. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's going to be okay. I'll say five minutes or less. Which is a shame because McIntyre is capable of a great match, and we're going to get to see the you know just the the greatest hits of of Goldberg here with finisher, finisher, finisher. It's just it's 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 just bad. But could McIntyre squash him? Yeah, but it, okay, I'll play it out. I don't think that's going to happen because I don't think Goldberg would agree to that just to come back for a Rumble, not Mania, and get squashed. I mean, it'd be weird for him to come back for just in time for WrestleMania season only to get squashed and go away. I think that's the least likely, but possible. I'll, I'll put it in the realm of possibility. But if that plays out, and let's just go down that road. If that plays out and Goldberg gets squashed, what does that mean? Well, that would mean that I would think that Goldberg goes away and we just get McIntyre looking even more unstoppable to maybe a returning Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar challenges uh, – uh, Brock Lesnar wins the Rumble and challenges Drew McIntyre for the championship, getting his revenge from last year, or at least that's the story. So that's what I think. Um, and maybe well, maybe Goldberg doesn't go away. Maybe he goes to SmackDown, and I, I don't know. I don't even know who he works with. I hate to play out Goldberg scenarios because I don't want him anywhere on my screen. But um, to your point about championships changing hands at WrestleMania, that's something I haven't heard before. That's something I haven't really thought about because – I haven't got that far, but it's a good point to bring up because do I want anybody changing hands right now? Major championships? No. I'm very cool with uh, Roman Reigns carrying the Universal Championship. He's been absolutely killing it. I don't want anyone to take it from him. I would have I would have him hold the belt for over a year. Uh, at the same time, Drew McIntyre is also killing it. I would have go, uh, both of them, both McIntyre and Roman Reigns, retain their respective championships at WrestleMania. I know it's not super interesting. I know Vince probably won't want to do it because, oh, well, you got to have a change. you got to have a big change. It's well, well, why? Just to have a change? Just to say you had a change even though it's not the right move? So, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I think that that is certainly, um, to me, the right move this year. Don't change. You don't always have to have a big championship change at WrestleMania. You don't. But you can guarantee one thing. Whoever wins the Rumble is going to be standing there pointing to the WrestleMania sign as is required by corporate. 
You can guarantee that. That's one thing that will never change. All right. Well, DJ, I know you have another voicemail. I didn't, I didn't ignore it. I see it. So we're going to give everybody a double dip surprise, a double dip feature of DJ Kuzmo. And this is the very last voicemail. So um, we'll end it on that note for the night. But uh, here it is, and we'll respond to it. Here we go. Hey, Matt, this is DJ Kuzmo back at it again on your mailbag show. It's been a while since I called into your show. Hope everybody's doing well. Shout out to all of the listeners and everybody at the WWE Unofficial Podcast team. Um, Right now, I just have some thoughts to share about four possible winners for the men and four possible winners for the women. So I'm going to start with the women. Um, Definitely Bianca Belair by far is one of the most uh, popular names that's being mentioned to be possibly win the Royal Rumble. Um, the second person I have, Charlotte Flair. Yes, we, we saw that Charlotte Flair. She won it last year. And um, who knows? Maybe Charlotte Flair could possibly win it. Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke is one of the uh, one of the up and comings that could possibly get a chance to make it to the final four. And maybe she could possibly win it. And last but not least for the women, the one, the only, Lana. Yeah, that's right. Lana. What was the last time we saw Lana? I think it was at, uh, she was supposed to be the person that was going to pair with Asuka at TLC, but then Charlotte Flair took her place. And we haven't seen Lana on television since then. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, where WWE Creative puts Lana into this whole Royal Rumble return. And if we do see a new character or just the same, I'm happy to be here, or I just want to go out and be a good girl and win. Anyway, um, I just want to go to the men's Royal Rumble. So now I have four possible winners for the men. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but here's what I have. I got AJ Styles. AJ Styles right now with his pairing with Omos, is, he's doing a pretty good job. Um, I just recently watched the documentary that they did of him when he made his debut in 2016. Phenomenal job by none other than the uh, AJ Styles. So I want to see... If this is a possibility that AJ Styles could get back into title contention, of course, you know, he had his matchup with Drew McIntyre at TLC, but um, you want to, I want to see more of AJ Styles, you know, possibly pairing against Roman Reigns or maybe going up against Drew McIntyre again. Um, the other person I have for the men, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, we just saw Shinsuke have a, a you know, a babyface turn on SmackDown, so I want to see where WWE creative um you know does with him and it seems like him and cesaro are not a a team anymore so uh this could be a good time for for shinsuke to uh, get that push to main event um brock lesnar um this is a name you know that always reoccurs every year we haven't seen brock lesnar since wrestlemania after losing to drew mcintyre so it's a possibility that maybe brock lesnar you know, it'd be interesting to see if he does win, does he go up against, you know, Roman Reigns or if he goes up against a rematch against Drew McIntyre. So Brock Lesnar could be a interesting possibility to win the Royal Rumble. And last but not least, the one, the only, The Fiend. Now, we all saw what happened at TLC, Um, you know, pretty, pretty hokey, you know, with the whole character sense. Um getting burned alive whatever the case may be but the fiend could possibly return and there's a lot of speculations that he could be returning as a darker character or what have you but um the fiend could be a possible you know uh, a possible winner of the men's royal rumble so just throwing those uh, names at you matt and um yeah once again always good to um listen to your show and um all the best for this uh royal rumble coming up and talk to you next time Boy, oh boy, you present a lot of options here. And I have covered a lot of these throughout the show here, so I won't duplicate it. But I will just say AJ Styles, to me, is a, is and I've labeled him as a dark horse. I think he's a dark horse, meaning he has a chance, but he's kind of like the, the semi-medium to long shot of winning the Royal Rumble. I don't think he has a, an amazing chance. Um, but I think he's one of the guys you got to watch, specifically with Omos out there as the wild card. To, to pr- probably help AJ Styles from being eliminated, where he's on the outside and someone eliminates AJ, but then almost catches him and puts him back in the rumble. I think that's certainly a spot to uh, think about with AJ Styles probably going to be rescued one or two times from almost and potentially wins the thing. I mean, he could win 
not of his own volition, where somebody else gets, you know, you have a double elimination with Randy Orton and The Fiend eliminating one another, and then you have AJ winning just by standing there and not doing anything. I mean, there, there's ways to get to it, and I'm fine with it. I'm fine with kind of the resurrection of AJ Styles. You know, he he's, has been kind of the lost soul until Omos was uh, introduced, and that certainly breathed new life. But let's get a little more serious. Let's let's get to the AJ Styles that we all knew and loved when he was facing John Cena and putting on amazing matches, and he just fell right into the, the WWE's lap, uh, of which I don't think they realized the success he was going to have in WWE. So, um, yeah, and, and the whole women's side. Yeah, I mean, there's also, what about a returning, um, n- not Nia Jax, boy. We don't need her to hurt somebody else. Uh, but but what about a returning Naomi, right? I mean, there, there's there's possibilities out there, guys, and maybe Lana, like you said. But I don't know how far Lana is along. I don't. I, I thought she was injured, but then and I know she was super sad to to be replaced by Charlotte Flair. Essentially, uh, she was gaining some momentum, some sympathy, unbelievably, and they just she poof was gone. So I don't know if she'll be returning to the Rumble. Honestly, I'm not that excited for it. But maybe she wins just by standing there and pulls a Survivor Series on us. I don't know. But a lot of possibilities, guys. This is what the Rumble does. I think this does us. This drives fans more insane than WrestleMania because there's so many possibilities with 30 entrants. And yes, you know um, who are a, a lot of those 30 are with WWE releasing the names of the people, and uh, you know who's going to be in the Rumble for the most part. But those mystery slots and different combinations that could happen, and, and, and all that kind of stuff, and call-ups from NXT. There's a lot out there, guys. There's a lot out there. Maybe hey. Maybe we'll get Titus World Slide this year. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that popped in my head. So if you don't know what Titus World Slide is, just just freaking YouTube it, please. All righty, guys. Thank you, DJ Kuzmo, as always. Uh, a great listener. And uh, great to hear your voice, as always. And uh, to everybody who called in and took the time to email us. I, I know that you know everyone's busy as hell. And uh, I do appreciate that. And I hope everyone is staying safe. Um, and you're, you know, you're staying smart and, uh, we're, we're, we're getting into February now almost and amazingly up here in the Northeast, after you get through February, it's like, okay, you got through the crappiest part of the winter and then bam, it's spring. So, um, it's, it's crazy how fast time goes now, but, um, we'll be back again, guys. We'll be back on, uh, tom- well, tomorrow you'll hear Zach Smith, but I will be back Saturday night with your official Royal Rumble preview and prediction show so I get a couple of days off to rest my voice, get my brain ready for Saturday, for Sunday night, and uh, all the big things coming there. So, everybody, thank you so much. As always, I'll be talking to you next time. So here's something that I bet you don't think about a lot. That's your grip strength. You know, we use our grip strength for so many different things during the day that I don't think we realize how important it is and how important it is to Not just realize we're using it, but to strengthen it. Having good grip strength can mean the difference between falling and not falling, being able to hold on to that item or dropping it. And you know what else really good grip strength does? It creates a great first impression. Have you ever met someone for the first time and they give you that dead fish hand? That is not a great way to make a good first impression. So why don't you take care of your grip strength? Check out Grip Sanity. You may be asking, what is Grip Sanity? Well, it's an all-in-one device. It's easy to change handles. It'll have your forearms burning in minutes. It'll improve your grip strength, of course, but it's very convenient because you can take it with you anywhere. There's no clunky you know, equipment that you have to bring with you. So if you're wondering what this is and you want to learn out more information, Go to gsanity.com and check out Grip Sanity. Look at the testimonials. It's one of those things, guys, that I don't think people really even notice or realize maybe they have an issue until they have a problem. So get ahead of it. Go to Grip Sanity. Check out gsanity.com. That's their website that you can look at the product. You can check out. There's tons of different colors, and you can find the one that suits you. So again, go out and check Grip Sanity. The website is gsanity.com.